Hello everyone, and welcome back to more Final Fantasy VII. We are at part 21. In the last part, uh, we had the big sad, Aerith was killed by Sephiroth. And in this part, we are going to continue to hunt Sephiroth down to hopefully get the black materia away from him before he can use it. Now that Aerith's plan is pretty much in the shitter, considering we don't even know what her plan was. And you know, she, uh, she kicked the bucket, so I guess we'll never know. But... Anyways, Sephiroth seems to be almost guiding Cloud along with these visions and through manipulating him, so now we know we need to keep heading north. So that is where we are going. North. <laughs> uh, this is a bit of a longer part, if you can't tell. Uh, a lot of editing was done here, and this part was actually very long initially. We're going to get some really important story bits in this part, along with uh, making some progress in the gameplay um, as we start off Disc 2. We are in Disc 2 now. Uh, that's exciting. <laughs> uh, in case you don't know, the way discs work in this game, the, the PlayStation could not store uh, disc-based games just cannot store memory onto the disc themselves. It is stored within either a memory card that you put into the system or the system itself, depending on what system you're playing on, but discs cannot store memory, um, unlike cartridges. So the PlayStation and memory cards, but what this allowed for, not only did discs have much more storage space than cartridges, but it also allowed for um, cartridges or discs uh, games to be able to be spread across multiple discs and because the save data is put on the system or on the memory card rather than disc itself it doesn't affect anything gameplay wise so you get to keep all your levels all the items equipment everything that you had before and just continue on through the game so uh square enix or squaresoft at the time definitely was the ones that took advantage of this the most with final fantasy 7 being three discs and final fantasy 8 and 9 being four discs um and they're that big, not because the games themselves are much longer than uh, other RPGs, but because they have so many FMVs, and those took up a ton of storage space. Video files in general take up a ton of storage space on um, on uh, discs, or just in general, like recording footage for this game. These parts are big. <laughs> they take up a lot of storage space, and I actually, every like four or five parts, I have to clean out like delete them all after I upload them to YouTube to clean them out because it's taken up so much space on my computer. But yeah, uh, those enemies are interesting. Basically, depending on how, if they have their shield up or not, they will be weak to either physical attacks or magic, and you just have to figure out which one they are currently weak to. Use that on them. There you go. Not hard. Not particularly hard, but you know, it, it adds a little more engagement to the battles other than just mashing the A button, so I appreciate it. Um... But yeah, anyways, uh, this part we're, you know, we're going to be making our way through this cave here. Uh, I will be getting all the treasure this time. I won't be missing out on stuff like I did in part 19. Rip that ribbon. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyways, uh, and we also have a fun little mini game this part, as you will see later. Uh, and man, um, this is actually, you know, uh, in case you, the Aerith's death was the beginning of it, but we are actually heading into a pretty dark part of the game. Um, but there's this one mini game that we play that's just so tonally inconsistent with the rest of this part of the game. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, things are pretty grim right now. <laughs> uh, so I mean, we just lost a character that, like I said, she she seemed like she had plot armor she seemed like one of those characters you know characters like that like main characters always have plot armor meaning they, they can't die they're, they're like super important to the story Aerith seemed like that kind of character but no not at all and that is uh, one of the many reasons that's such a surprising effective moment in uh this game's story but anyways we actually just got a magic plus materia uh, that I will be giving to Yuffie just to get her all jacked out with magic, jacked up with magic. Uh, jacked out is not a saying, I'm pretty sure anyway. Um, 
she's going to be doing a fuck ton of damage. And we will also be getting that item, the circlet, in this part. If you remember, I said you can steal that from an enemy early on in disc 2. We will be getting that in this part. Uh, and the circlet is magic and spirit. And spirit is essentially magic defense plus 30. So shit, it's good. It's a really good accessory. Highly recommend you get it. Um, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, power sources. Th these like sources are interesting. These all they re they literally only they just raise stats. That's all these items do. <laughs> Like, there's no catch, there's nothing really to them, you'll just find them occasionally, and it's just like, here, raise one of your stats for one of your party members, and it's like, oh, another reason, that's another reason I kind of like to stick with one party throughout the game so I can jack them up with all these, like, stat boosting items, too. Um, so yeah, you've noticed, unless I'm required to bring along another party member for whatever reason, I stick with Cloud, Barrett, and Yuffie. <laughs> uh... And Cloud is shrunken now. These enemies have a little funny gimmick that you're about to see here. Um, so they they shrink, a, they shrink one of your party members down, and then they just gobble them up, and then they are just gone from the party. Oh no, not Air, not only Arab but Cloud too. Shit, <laughs> no, uh, he'll come back. But like, so it's so funny they're just gone. It's not even like they die. It's just they're out of the fight. <laughs> um. But yeah, and now we are back in the overworld, and we are going to continue heading north on this continent to a, a, another little, nice little town. Um, and also, this overworld music, uh, just just so you know, this wonderful overworld music that you hear in this game, this is the last time we will be hearing it in Final Fantasy VII. Um, so, if you're playing this game along, you know, may maybe take a second. Just relish in the music one last time because, like I said, you will not be hearing this in the overworld anymore after this point. So, just relish in it. <laughs> it's a wonderful piece of music. Um, it's, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're about to hit some pretty major changes in this game. Uh, of course, Aerith died. That's a pretty major, like, what the fuck moment. But from here on out, disc two. If you think the story was complicated beforehand, oh, oh man, have you got a storm coming. <laughs> Disc 1 sets up a lot of stuff, and it hits you with that bombshell at the very end, and plants a lot of seeds. Disc 2 is when they sprout into horrific, confusing revelations, and oh man, it's wonderful, and I love it so much. Um, but yeah, just... Just get ready, buckle up, and the next few parts, oh boy, we're gonna have some fun times. Um, this story, I, I've said it before, I, I adore this story. This is one of my favorite stories on the series. It goes to such wildly unexpected places. The conflict is great, the, the stakes are great. It's just a wonderfully told story. And like I said, it, it's, if you don't know about this story, it is not going in the direction that you think is going. It's going, I, I promise you. <laughs> it is not. Um, but anyways, uh, we're now in this town here. Uh, say goodbye to the overworld music. It's, we'll, we'll never hear it again for the rest of this commentary. How sad. But it's okay. We got some great stuff coming up, and some other great songs. Um, but yeah, welcome to Snowtown. I forget the name of this town, but of course, once again, visually really sticks out. Um, and I'm going to speed through this because I spend almost three minutes buying a bunch of shit. I'm just getting everybody... Uh, I'm selling a, a lot of old stuff. I'm selling Aerith's equipment because, you know, we don't really need Aerith's equipment anymore, do we? Um... And then I'm just, uh, getting everybody re-equipped, getting with the new extra material slots, getting them some good stuff, and there we go. Um, and then just selling all the stuff that I don't need to make some extra money. There we go. Beautiful. We're all set. But yeah, um, this town, uh, you, there's actually a really important story bit that is very easy to miss in this town, and I'm going to show that off. Uh, 
I definitely missed it my first few playthroughs, and it actually explains something really important to this game, the backstory of this game. So, um, multiple really important things, actually. But yeah, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your stay, thank you. Um, yeah, we're, we're at the part, of, this is... Aerith's Death Onward, the, this game kind of really takes off. Uh, disc 1, I was heavily enjoying myself my first playthrough. Uh, disc 2 is when I truly like fell in love with this game and realized how just how special it really was. Um, it's a game that you can... I Anytime I play it, I can just feel the passion put behind it. I can feel this was a labor of love and was not just made to you know sell copies. It was made as a passion project to try to push the limits to what video games could be and to try to make something truly special in its own right um, beyond just leaving an impact uh, and it, it's something I feel a passion in a lot of the best Final Fantasies I feel it in 6, I feel it in 9 but 7, seven it's just on another level to me I feel there's just a passion here there's this emotion behind it. And at any time there's something behind that in a work of art, you can really feel it. Um, and it's wonderful. But uh, yeah, we actually uh, are about to get to a bit of a maze part of the game. Um, and it's really confusing because you have a map, but it actually doesn't point out where you are on the map. It just points out where uh what like the entire map as a whole so you kind of have to figure out where you are um so it's a little confusing but you know we'll we'll make it through okay and this is the area that has a super important story thing uh you actually have to examine that computer like those computer things up there those machines and uh as you'll see here we actually have some video files to look at the original crisis what is this what is this place is that is that Aerith's mom? That's Aerith's real mom. Ifalna. And who is this strange fellow? Who could this be? Yeah, this is Aerith's real mother. What What's going on here? So, she's explaining the backstory of the Cetra. Some stuff we already knew. Uh, the Cetra were a, a race of people who came down to this planet searching for the promised land. Um, and who the person who she is talking to was actually Professor Gast, as we will find out, who was the Shinra professor, scientist, head scientist before Hojo. Um, and he is trying to get answers about just exactly what's up with the Cetra and like what they're trying to do and why exactly they died off. So, yeah, um, I mean, uh, so what they're talking about now is the fact that, uh, I just completely lost my train of thought, uh, but, um, they're talking about how a, uh, the Cetra, you know, are, are they doing their thing, they're being Cetra, and then this crisis from the sky came to the planet as they as Ifana is referring to it, um, who first deceived the Cetra and then started attacking them and killing them off. You should be able to figure out what this crisis from the sky is, but, um, you know, the game will explain it here for you here in just a minute, but it's it's pretty obvious uh, just what exactly is going on here. If, they, if this thing was at first able to deceive the Cetra, and we thought that this thing was once a Cetra earlier in the game. You know, it's pretty obvious. Anyways, um, now we have the, our first reference to something called a weapon. No. Okay, th there's the answer. It was Genova. Genova came down and killed off most of the Cetra. That's why the Cetra is now an extinct race, actually, after Aerith was killed. Um... And in response to Cetra, uh, Genova killing the Cetra and also 
attacking the planet the planet views Genova as as a crisis for the planet so the planet in retaliation created the weapon which is a well a weapon to fight Genova or to come out anytime the planet gets put into some kind of crisis um but there is no recorded instance of weapon ever actually being used and nobody really knows what weapon is or where weapon is um but the planet made it in retaliation to Genova because of what Genova was doing and as I said Genova is a being that can manipulate what people see so Genova is dangerous but here we have confidential daughter's record daughter honey I think you figure this out. Professor Gast is Aerith's father. <laughs> That's a little weird, isn't it? So this Shinra professor, this Shinra scientist is, is Aerith's father. The, Ifalna and Gast uh, fell in love and had a, a beautiful little babu. <laughs> and... They were happy for a bit, but then, as we'll see here, something bad happens. I mean, we know something bad happens. Afalna died while Aerith was still a baby, somehow made it to Midgar, and Elmira took Aerith in. But, um... Aerith, I wonder what dangers will await her. Oh, if only you knew Afalna. Poor Aerith. But, uh, yeah, that's a little interesting revelation that Gast, this character that's been talked about a ton, is actually Aerith's father. But, of course, we know something goes wrong. Something has to go wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then Afalna tries to, you know, open the door and send them away, but who else is it but the Shinra? It's them. And they want to use a fauna as a research specimen and who else is it here but hojo hojo is a fucking maniac <laughs> uh this new sample so they're like they want a fauna and they also want the baby to research and do experiments on um and they're because hojo just sees them as ex research objects doesn't see them as human beings and this nearly extinct race that was killed from Genova. And also, Hojo's kind of an idiot because he thought Genova was a Cetra. But Genova is not. <laughs> Genova killed the Cetra. A calamity for the skies. And we're, where we are actually headed is the place where Genova first landed on the planet, the northern crater. That's where Genova crash landed on the planet to begin with and started wreaking havoc but uh yeah <laughs> so then Hojo took Afalna and Aerith away uh Afalna was able to escape just barely with Aerith still being just a little kid after years of them experimenting on them uh Afalna died Amira took Aerith in and then we know the rest pretty sad backstory huh and here I am, once again, getting ahead of myself, but uh, I try to get get a little key item early here, but I have to do something else beforehand. Um, hello, cat. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, like I said, that's that's pretty that important story stuff. That gives us more of Aerith's backstory. That explains what Genova is. That's our first hint at weapon, which weapon will come into play later. Um, that's pretty important story stuff, and it's easy to miss. This game has a lot of that stuff, especially in Disc 2 and 3. There's a ton of optional story stuff that's very important to understanding the full story that you can just miss. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, but anyway, the Turks are... Well, uh, Elena is here, and Elena thinks that Cloud and the game are the one who killed Sang, but we know that's not true. We know it was Sephiroth, but she is... She is upset, uh, but also now we know that the the Shinra are here and also following Sephiroth. As but she says it's a secret. It's pretty clear what they're doing. So 
We're gonna get into some trouble soon, aren't we? The Shinra and Sephiroth are here. That's not good. They're going to feel some pain. What She's about to punch, and what we have to do is try to avoid it, but I think it's funnier to just have Cloud take the punch and he just falls over. <laughs> and then she's just like, why didn't you try to avoid it? <laughs> Put them in some house in the village. So yeah, if you fail that, uh, you get put in this house, which I think is your hint to actually check the machines. Uh, but if you succeed, then uh, Elmira, or not Elmira, uh, Elena will just, like, stumble and fall and just roll away. And it's fucking hilarious, too. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we're about to get to one of the stupidest mini games in the game. I fucking hate this so much, but I also love it at the same time. Um, I mean, it's not good. Uh, but <laughs> it's also such a tonal shift because like I said we're at a pretty somber point in the game and it's only going to get worse <laughs> um, it, this this is a dark part of the game here so uh, yeah okay what I'm trying to do is I'm trying I was trying to get this snowboard from this kid so we got to talk to him after we deal with the uh, Elena stuff then we get the snowboard and then we can keep going and I think you can guess what the mini game is here. Um, I throughout this commentary, I've avoided putting in like stupid meme joke things or like edits and stuff. I kind of want to keep it as just a straight commentary uh, of the game itself. But I couldn't help myself here. I had to put in something, especially since there's no music here to begin with. I had to put in something. Oh yeah, <laughs> Sonic Adventure. Uh, I love Sonic Adventure's soundtrack, and, you know, this snowboarding stuff, it just reminds me of it. It also makes it way more exciting, because there's no music in this part, and it's really awkward. <laughs> uh, but if you have this jam of a fucking song uh, from Sonic Adventure, then this feels a lot more exciting, even though the snowboarding minigame controls, like, utter shit. <coughs> Excuse me, but... This would be a fun minigame if it controlled well. <laughs> it just controls like shit. It's really stiff and awkward, and I crash into things a lot, and turning feels awful, um, and it takes me way longer than it should to get through this. Uh, it's, it's just kind of a mess. Like, drifting just feels horrendous. Uh, this minigame's awful, and I hate it. And also, I don't know why the balloons are here. I don't know the purpose of the balloons. Um, I've always done really shit in this minigame. Maybe if you get enough balloons, you'll get an item or something. I have no fucking idea. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just crashing into fucking things like an idiot. Um, it's impossible to lose this. I know it says the time thing. That's more for just bragging rights. And you can actually go back to the Gold Saucer later and play this. Along with the motorcycle minigame, too. You can play both of them for, like, high scores and shit. So I think that's what the time is for. But, like, there's not a timer here. Like, you can't... I'll run out of time and fail. Uh, this is just such a weird, like, Aerith just died, we just got backstory on why the Cetra were wiped out, and like, what, how Genova is going to kill the planet, and Genova is a threat to the very life of the planet itself, and how Hojo horrifically experimented on Aerith and Elfana for years. It's just kind of like, why is this here now? <laughs> Why? But oh man, it's off on a tangent. Uh, Sonic Adventure's soundtrack is fucking awesome. Listen to this fucking music. Like, it's a bop and a half. Like, shit, man. Uh, Sonic Adventure's soundtrack, I, I fucking hate that game. But Sonic Adventure's soundtrack, top tier stuff. It's amazing. It's such a jam. Also, we have this part that's so stressful. Like, what the fuck? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> so many fucking trees. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, I, I say I hate this, but I also kind of love this at the same time because it's fucking hilarious to see Cloud crash into shit like an absolute fucking buffoon. Um, you know, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, yeah, we're just kind of zooming along here, having a gay old time. Uh, I just don't, I don't get it. 
Like, a snowboarding minigame is fine, but make it control better. Like, the motorcycle minigame controlled fine. Why does this control like such ass? I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's infuriating. I mean, this, this also goes on for way too long. Like, I, it's been at this for three minutes. We're still jamming out to Sonic Adventure music. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? This should not, this should last like, this should be like a two minute thing at most. I don't know why it lasts this fucking long. And you could just be like, oh, just play better and it'll go faster. But like, why does it control like ass? It's just bizarre, just in general. The, the, the whole thing is just bizarre. Uh, that it's at this point in the game, that it controls like this. Like, what? why? We're gonna get to a lot of minigames in Disc 2, actually. Um, some of them are pretty hit and miss. But it's okay, it's over now. We get this whoosh. <laughs> Beautiful. It's fine, we're okay. And now we can actually continue on with the game. <laughs> Yeah, now we are at that part where we need the map, and it's it's a great time. We actually have to, we, uh, yeah, we'll be opening the, the map occasionally. I'll be looking at the map to figure out where the fuck we are, um, so then I can keep going. I actually make a wrong turn at one point and then realize it later. Uh, so, basically, so yeah, we're going to be opening the map. Just to explain a little bit, we start out at, like, the south um, of this place, and we're trying to get up to the north. Oh, uh, that check mark is where our goal is. That's where we are trying to get to. So, yeah. Um, you just gotta find, like, kind of loop your way around. It's very, very easy to get lost, though. Uh, just eventually, you know, if you get lost, I mean, law of probability or something says you'll probably get to the right place eventually. <laughs> I don't know. You'll You'll be fine. It's it's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I I'm just also we will be finding. This is the area where you can find the enemy uh, that you can steal the circlet from. Uh, so that's what you know. We'll be doing that too. Um, it's a great time. <laughs> uh, and then eventually we will be making our way to the northernmost part of the the world, the northern crater, where as I said, that's where Genova first landed on the planet so just let's just say some stuff is going to be going down there <laughs> <coughs> oh excuse me oh battle here we go what do we got what do we got what do we got what do we got uh weird bug things not what we're looking for continue claw that's cool these guys aren't too bad of course, we're at a new disc, so we're running. We're going to be running into all sorts of new enemies. You know, it's weird. This game kind of splits discs up in a weird way. Like I said, uh, the other games are much more even with how they split up discs, but in this game, disc one is by far the most game. <laughs> uh, and then disc two and three, there's a lot more side stuff, but like main story-wise, there's not quite as much. And disc three in particular is just main story. It's just the last dungeon and uh, the final boss. That's it. Um, so yeah, we're a little over halfway through uh, this game. There's a lot of side stuff, though, and that we will be doing f most of it. Um, so, you know, we still got a ways to go. Don't, don't, I don't want to make it seem like, oh, the game's almost over, because it's not. We still got a, a good ways to go, at least a good 15 to 20 parts left. Um maybe less probably more like 15 uh is my estimate um but that's me probably being a little conservative uh voting for Donald Trump anyways uh <laughs> political jokes are so funny guys um yeah here I am looking at the map again being like wait where the fuck am I going and then I'm like where am I? I'm actually at that the middle part where the log is. That's where I am. It's a little hard to tell. But oh, battle! Who do we got? Who do we got? Is it what we're looking for? Is it what we're looking for? Hell yeah, it is. That that little woman, <laughs> ice woman. That's we can still circuits from them. 
which are really, really good accessories. So definitely steal those from these things, from that, that enemy. This dragon guy is, is a fucking pain to deal with, though. This fight takes way too long. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. We steal the circlet pretty fast. And by that, I mean first try. Like, that's, that's pretty good luck. So now we just gotta beat these fuckers. But, uh... This enemy has a really annoying tactic where it likes to counterattack if you physically attack it. And also, I'm trying to, at this point, uh, every, both Yuffie and Barret have their level 3 limit breaks, but Cloud doesn't, because to get uh, from a one level to another with limit breaks, you have to kill a certain amount of enemies. And because most of the enemies I've killed are with, like, Aqualung and Trine and stuff, uh, which both Barret and Yuffie have, they're the ones that are killing most of the enemies, so Cloud actually hasn't killed a lot, so... Right now I'm trying to mainly use physical attacks to get Cloud to actually, like, get some enemy deaths so I can get him his level 3 limit break. Uh -huh. And just see, I will be getting at least the item uh, of everyone's level 4 limit break, except Aerith's for obvious reasons. Aerith does have a level 4 limit break, but I will not be getting it because I don't really see the point. Um, but I will be getting everyone else's. Uh, but, of course, I will not be grinding everyone up to level 4 limit. I will only be, you know, getting these three fuckers up to level 4 limit. Because they're the ones I will be using. Um, but, like I said, by endgame, limit breaks happen so infrequently that, like, it's not really necessary. And you'll have strategies that are really fucking broken um, if you're, like, you know, doing the side stuff. So, I'm, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't. You don't really have to. In some limit breaks, Cloud's limit break, let me be more specific, is a pretty big hassle to get. Like, Barret's level 4 limit, Yuffie's level 4 limit, are, they aren't too bad to get. Barret's is just like you talk to somebody in a town. Yuffie's, you have to do a small little thing, but it takes like 15 minutes. Cloud's, you have to get a ton of points at the Gold Saucer, and it's annoying. Especially since you also, I'm going to need to buy like two other things that are also very expensive. Um... So yeah, it's a little, like, ugh, but, oh well. It's okay. And, uh, there's Yuffie's level 3 limit break gauntlet. That's nice. Go, Yuffie. And Yuffie's about to get a level up. She's about to get to the big 4-0. So that's exciting. Um, you level up a lot faster in this game than you do in other Final Fantasies. By end game, in, like, say, Final Fantasy 5 or 6, I'm typically early 40s. Or like Final Fantasy 9 late 40s, um, late 40s, early 50s. Final Fantasy 7, late game, I'm like in the mid 60s, sometimes upwards of 70. Uh, it's just interesting. <laughs> the level up system is just a bit different here. The game's balanced just a bit differently. Not to make it particularly easier or harder, it's just different. It's a, it's a little interesting. Oh yeah. I got into a battle, and Yuffie fucking died. <laughs> Oops. It's fine. She's back up now. Death means nothing. Why didn't they ju just do that to Aerith? I don't know. They actually try that in Final Fantasy V. Spoilers for Final Fantasy V. Uh, Galif dies. I already said that in the last part. But they actually try in Final Fantasy V to use a phoenix down on him, and it establishes that it doesn't work. So if a character dies for story reasons in Final Fantasy, you can't use a phoenix down. Thank you, Final Fantasy V, for establishing that. Even though this game is not in the same universe as Final... Whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so now we have gotten to where we need to be. So this part's a little confusing. We need to head the direction that Cloud is currently facing right now. And we place a landmark here to remind us of where we currently are. Um... So, but the wind will try to blow us in different directions and shit. Uh, so we just need to keep, like, not get disoriented and keep heading in the direction that Cloud is facing. And eventually you'll get to where you need to go. And if you fuck up and get way, like, way lost, somebody will come and pick you up and take you to where you need to go. But, um, if you're not a fucking idiot, well, I am an idiot, but you know what I mean. You'll, you'll be okay. Uh, but yeah. We got these robot guys now. I think you could steal something from them. They seem like the kind of... I don't know. The way I go about stealing things in this game is like, I see an enemy and I'm like, 
that looks like an enemy that has something, and I'll try to steal, and half the time I'm wrong. But sometimes I'll get really lucky. Like, I found out that circlet thing. I didn't, I didn't use a guide for that. I just got it, and I was like, oh shit, circlet. Yes, please, I'll take that. Um, but yeah. Here I am, just trying to get Cloud to kill the enemies. <laughs> Uh, just so we can get more enemy kills because I want him to get up to the level 3 limit break. Uh, and he, I, I kind of forget here, Cloud, I actually have Cloud with Bahamut, which is a really good summon. Uh, so I should be using that. Um, because that's essentially just a screen nuke and it does like thousands of damage per enemy. So not, not a bad thing to be using. But I, I don't start using that until next part where I'm like, oh shit, I have that, don't I? But yeah. Um, so yeah, just keep following this path. And then eventually you will get to where you need to be. I think I'm about to get there. Just, there we go. Beautiful. Done. Perfect. And uh, we will actually continue on uh, through this journey in the next part. Uh, in the next part, we will, you know, keep going up and uh, almost get to the northern crater. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys next time for more Final Fantasy VII.